Hey there, it's Elsie. Welcome back to my channel. You have reached Ten of Cups Tarot, and um, I am here to do a reading for uh, a peek into 2020. I know it's already the second, but you know, I'm just doing the best that I can here, <laughs> just trying to put out some readings. And um, so, you know, the peek into 2020 will be for January and February. It'll be for Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the sign of Capricorn. Um, so that's what we're doing today. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for um, the peak into 2020. So I do have some questions here that we'll ask. Um, we are going to ask some, well, first of all, we're going to pick a surrender card, and then we're going to pick an animal energy card to see which kind of energies you're dragging into the new year. And then we are going to do an overall oracle energy for the overall year, for the feel of the year. And then uh, we'll get to some tarot and we'll ask uh, three or four questions um, um, about uh, what's going to be going on in the new year. Okay, so the first card uh, we're picking is a surrender card. It's for Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the sign of Capricorn. And if you can please give me just one card, Spirit. One card for Capricorn, please. What's this one? Oh, surrender to low self-esteem. We can all use that at one point or another. You deserve success, love, and abundance. Set an intention to identify and release any remnants of low self-esteem. So um, you deserve success, love, and abundance. And you do. You do. We all do. Um, set an intention to identify and release any remnants of low self-esteem. Beautiful picture. Water. Yeah, water colors. All right. So um, the next one is the animal energy card. And if I could please have one animal energy card for the sign of Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter, please. One animal energy card. Energy that that uh, can be taken into 2020. That will be useful this year. Energy. Oops, there we go. There she is. Oh, look at you. You are the shark. You're getting stuff done, Capricorn. This is the year. <laughs> this is the year you get things done. The shark... Um, is very intelligent and uh, the shark is also the one who will circle circle for food circle the prey and so it's about time I think that you started making other people nervous about the way that you are going to be in this world going forward um, the shark itself let me just get my book here shark itself um, is water makes sense right shark in the water there we go the shark and so the shark it says is directness it's time for you to be direct Capricorn directness exposure revealing true nature and desire so this baby is all about being authentic being the person that you need to be at the time you need to be that person um, uh, Oh, interesting. The first sentence, the shark is only dangerous when we don't acknowledge it. So when if we don't acknowledge the shark in us, it can come from anywhere and bite us in the butt. <laughs> this card indicates that something big needs to be exposed. Something big needs to be exposed, Capricorn. It's lurking in the depths and creating tension. Shark energy takes us over when we are hesitant to be honest, to be totally ourselves. Capricorn, are you listening to me? Come closer. <laughs> it's time for you to be authentic. It's time for you to stop worrying about what other people are, are thinking about you. It is okay for you to be who you are and live in this world as you are. Okay? Um, it is time for you to be authentic and stop being hesitant to be honest. Um, it's okay if you say it and it's the truth and you say it in a kind way with the kindest intention. Sometimes it just needs to be said. Um, uh, we're totally ourselves who really, it, it may be tempting to continue pretending nothing is wrong. And you know, this is sort of something I know in my cap, some of my cappy friends is that they will continually serve others, continually serve others at, to the point of their own exhaust, exhaustion, their own complete collapse and exhaustion. And they will still ask for nothing. 
that is what a Capricorn is. And um, it says here that it may be tempting to continue pretending nothing is wrong, but when the shark energy is at play, we feel its presence circling us. So that anxiety that you have in your chest, um, it's time to get that out. It's time to get it out and speak about it. It's time to show people who you are. And if they don't like your sharky side, then they don't get to see your soft side either. Um, when you come to authenticity in your life, it is the most freeing thing. And you know what it also does? It allows others around you to be freer. It allows people around you to be who they are, not have to hide in the shadows because of whatever, because they feel too overweight or out of place, or maybe they're, maybe they're, they're in a same sex union or whatever it is. It allows the people around you when they see you being authentic and comfortable and not ignoring the shark in the dark, shark in the dark, <laughs> shark in the depths, the deep depths of the darkness. When they see that you're being brave, and noticing the shark, they're going to do the same because you're going to give them the affordability to do that. They're going to know, hey, you know, around this person, I can be who I want to be. I can be my absolute person because this person also is their absolute person. And when I allow them to be authentic, they allow me to be authentic. So the shark is only dangerous when um, it is not acknowledged. I love that. I'm using that. Putting on a t-shirt. Uh, better get Kim Cron's in on it first. Okay. Um, next one is Oracle. Okay. The Witch's Oracle, which is the overall energy for the year. I've got my new Witch's Oracle deck that I'm starting to get to know a little bit. And Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. We just need one card for Capricorn, please. One card for Capricorn for overall energy for the year. Oh, we got one that is popping out, and it is, whoops, oh, imagination, neat. Imagination, look at that. I love that depiction. Oh, beautiful work. It's an air card, so it's a card of Libra, um, <coughs> Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. All right, so I am going to grab the book, though, as soon as I can find it. It is, all right, oh, there it is, all right, so we're looking at imagination, which is air, imagination, I love the little limericks that they have in here, um, they're really cool, I'm just going to put the grannies on here, and it says, don't be afraid, no need for fright. Um, imagination's sacred sight. Time to believe, for it's the key. Unleash your gift. Trust what you see. The magic is worked with harm to none. So mote it be, there it be done. And it says here that the power of air sweeps through your imagination, urging you to believe what you see, for you have been blessed with the second sight. You've been blessed with the second sight. Um, strange shapes in the sky, vivid colors as you close your eyes, sighting repetitive signs and symbols all confirm the natural clairvoyance. A canny gift for, for a witch indeed. So um, disregard your doubts about your abilities of clear seeing. Okay, so some of you are clairvoyant and you're kind of ignoring it. And I didn't realize that I was clairvoyant until I stopped ignoring it. Whenever I saw something in my mind's eye, I pushed it out my mouth. I told somebody about it. And when I started doing that, it started resonating with other people. Like, how do you know that? How do you know that the drapes in my kitchen are beige and blue with a little bit of red in them? Um, but I was starting to see things like that um, during doing readings. It says, for your imagination is the gateway to real magic that beckons a world you have been longing to discover. Call upon, um, call upon the spirits uh, of the air to enhance your creativity and meditation abilities and to stimulate, stimulate your mind as you light incense, a yellow candle, and face direction of the east. It is a great time of fertility um, as air blows you 
in the direction of new beginnings. So throw caution in the wind and watch your um, visions manifest into reality. So um, for those of you who are, aren't aware, um, the, the whole pointing to the East thing, um, if you are someone who does follow religion, any sort of doctrine, you'll know that um, when Christ returns, uh, he is supposed to come from the East. So um, that is um, paying homage to uh, Jesus Christ himself. So, okay, so that is imagination. So that is you for the rest of the year. So you are going to, um, you're going to, you're going to play with your intuition, find out if you have intuitiveness. Um, and if you do, I would suggest that you read about that, study about that. And it's only going to be a help in your life, you guys. It's not a hindrance at all. I don't find it to be a hindrance at all. You don't have to read cards. Um, but being able to see around corners is something that has been, um, the something has been in my life for a very long time. I've been able to see around corners and be able to make really good decisions because I can um, see what's coming before it comes, if that makes any sense. <laughs> okay, so after that, uh, we are going to go to tarot, and I'm using um, Tarot of the Night today. And um, the first question I'm going to ask is, Spirit, what is going to make Capricorn happy this year in 2020? What is going to bring happiness to our Capricorn friends, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter in 2020? I'd like to call in Archangel Michael, if you can help me, please, to get information for the highest good of our uh, Sun, Moon, Rising, Jupiter, and Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus and Jupiter, um, people watching today <clears throat> under the sign of Capricorn. Um, if I could please have hold of the clear white light, bless me and keep me safe while I am connecting to spirit. And if I could have gods and goddesses and angels and guides attending, please to help me get the best information I can for Scorpio for the year 2020. All right, I'm gonna cut. I'm going to do three cards for each question. I have five questions. First question is, what is going to make you happy in the new year? Well, first of all, you're going to, um, whatever it is, it's going to be coming at you quickly. So if it's happiness that's coming at you, well, it says here it's the Ace of Pentacles. So Ace of Pentacles is about a new start in love, right? It's about a new start in love. It's about a tangible something or other. Pentacles are some things you can hold. So it's a, it's a gift. It's uh, a, either a gift of love, um, a gift that you can hold, taste, smell, um, you know, like flowers, chocolates, uh, jewelry, that kind of thing. And it looks like that gift will be coming in quickly for you here. Um, the Queen of Cups is also here. And so the Queen of Cups is the emotional queen. She is the one that um, does feel things very deeply. Um, deeply down to the depths. She is uh, the person who um, um, is willing to just wrap herself around other people to help them. She also can be a little bit, um, she can have outbursts, you know, can't we all, right? She can have outbursts, but she's just, it's just because she's very emotional, very deep, and um, she um, is probably someone who cries easily, um, but she is always the person who is going to be there for you. So um, the Eight of Wands says that a pentacle is coming in soon, something you can, um, that is tangible, and it might be coming, um, this could be your energy, Capricorn. It could be uh, whether or not, you're, whether you're female or male, this Queen of Cups energy could be you. We all have female and male um, energies. So um, yeah, the Queen of Cups is here. Um, Queen of Cups and the pentacle. Maybe the Queen of Cups is bringing in the pentacle. The Queen of Cups energy bringing in the pentacle quickly. That's what I see here. So um, it looks like you want what would make you happy is some sort of a, a, an acknowledgement or something like that from someone that you really um, you really feel is uh, deep and um, how do you say um, deep and possibly romantic. Someone who who you admire, I suppose, that you would be getting um, the uh, pentacle from that person that that might make you happy. All right, having trouble with my words today, clearly. All right, so next, uh, will Capricorn find their person in 2020? Or will their person find them in 2020? Is there a person coming for Capricorn in 2020? Well, 
Well, I would say yes. There's a six of wands here for victory, saying that you're going to be popular. Um, so there's going to be lots of social outings, a uh, popular person. Six of wands is usually about victory. Um, it's usually also about, let's see, victory. Oh, okay. It's not that kind of victory. In this case, it is actually um, um, the person that will find you is going to have victory in going into hermit mode and releasing their pain. So um, your person is going to find you, I would say yes, um, because there is a card of victory here. So I would say yes. That person though, um, I feel that person is currently in hermit mode, so you're currently not speaking to them, and um, they are not speaking to anybody actually. They're trying to release this pain. The Ten of Swords is about you know, things that have been said, awful things that have been said, communications that weren't great. So it's uh, it's time to release all the pain. And your person, your soulmate, will do that. They will take time to clean their karma, to clean themselves, to um, make sure that everything is good before they go into their soulmate. Because if they don't, there's nothing in the books, guys, that says your soulmate has to tolerate you if you're a hot mess. So make sure that you're working on yourself always. And uh, if you're waiting for your, your person to come, your soulmate, I would suggest that you, you know, clean up your karma and um, get into meditation, balance your energy and all of that. Because if you're not ready, if you're a hot mess when, you're, when your person gets to you, they're just going to hightail it out of there anyway. There's nothing says that they have to sit there and endure you if you're not willing to do the hard work. So um, make sure you do the hard work because if not, you are not going to be worthy of your soulmate when they show up, all right? The soulmate is intended um, to be someone who is actually healed, someone who doesn't need anyone. So when your um, your person shows up, your soulmate, um, you're gonna like them, you're gonna want to be around them, but it's not gonna be codependent, you're not gonna need them because you're both gonna be a whole people already, okay? Uh, things will get easier. Oh, will things get easier energetically for Capricorn in 2020. Why am I boxing cards like mad? There we go. Okay. Um, will things get easier energetically for Capricorn in 2020? Three cards. <clears throat> okay, I would say yes again. We've got the victory card. <coughs> Excuse me, for those of you who are in headphones, sorry. Um, uh, the uh, Six of Wands, again, as we just spoke about, is about victory. It's about being popular, maybe having your own YouTube channel. It's about um, things um, moving along, right? It's about uh, success and moving along. So the yes, I would say that in, um, in 2020, things are about to get energetically easier. Um, you are now in the energy of the King of Wands, and the King of Wands is a passionate energy. So perhaps it's been a while since you've had your mojo, <laughs> and maybe it's time that it's come back. So maybe it's time for you to, you know, get out meeting people, meeting other people, and um, maybe it's time, if you are single, to um, start mingling again. Um, I do see that the... <clears throat> Um, the Eight of Swords is here. So I do see some stagnant energy, you being stuck, you being stagnant. Um, that thing is, is that if we can get this moving, if we can get the mojo moving, and if we can get um, you some victory in perhaps, you know, um, just having dinner with someone else or a group of people or drinks with a group of people, that's a really good place to be. Um, it will bring you out of your stuck at stagnation. Um, it'll bring you out of that feeling of being overthinking and everything um, going over and over and over in your head. All right. And then we're going to ask, what should Capricorn expect in January? What is the energy for January for Capricorn, please? What is the highest good for January for Capricorn? Highest good for January. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Highest good. Oops. There's two. Is it two? Yep, two. And let's pull one, three. There we go. <coughs> All right. In January, for the highest good, it's time to get you back in balance. So temperance... <coughs> pardon me. Temperance is about... Um, 
healing. Um, it's about bringing yourself back into balance. You can see she's, you know, she's she's not really even looking. She's paying more in paying more attention to her intuition than anything. Um, she knows what's going on down here just by using her intuition. So um, the Temperance card is about healing. Um, it is about um, being a little softer. It is about um, just staying in balance. You know, temperance, right? You think of, when I think of temperance, I think of tempered glass. You can crack, but you won't break. So it's about, you know, being strong. Uh, it's about being prepared for, um, you know, in, in balance for anything that might come your way that might throw you out of balance. It is harvest time. Eight of Pentacles is harvest time. It also can be about work. So um, if you are a person who is trying to come into balance so you can work, then, you know, that's that thing is going to happen for you. Eight of Pentacles is about um, the harvest. So the Seven of Pentacles is about planting the seeds, taking care of them, growing them. And the Eight of Pentacles is about harvesting the money. So um, this could indicate that there may be a job on the horizon. This could uh, indicate maybe an interview has come. Um, and this looks like it's actually coming pretty quick, though, because um, we have the Eight of Wands. And this is quick moving energy, fast moving action related energy. So we have Temperance, which is uh, warning you to stay in balance. If you are going for a job interview, as long as you're in balance, there shouldn't be an issue. It looks like whatever's coming to you uh, in terms of um, Pentacles or in terms uh, in terms of of um, Temperance, this is all going to come into um into play pretty quickly in the month of January. All right, and we just need three cards for a peak at February for Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the sign of Capricorn, please. What should, oops, what should should uh, Capricorn expect in February, month of February, 2020? Oh, let me take those because they're not going back in the deck. There we go. All right, and we have, wow, soulmate connection. Look at that, Six of Cups. So Six of Cups is all about um, the soulmate. It's all about things coming from the past, bringing forward. Um, it could be a love relationship, a love connection. Uh, it could also be um, a friendship connection, someone you haven't seen in a very long time um, and is coming to see you. This card is also coming up with the Empress. So that tells me that when you use that, you'll use your intuition to find out who this person is. Think about it, go into meditation about it, talk to spirit about it, find out who it is. You are intuitive, my dear. So um, if you are taking on the Empress energy, you're going to know who that who that person is. Because it's been a while and it's time for justice. It's time for you to be happy. It's time for the scales to come in into being even again, this is also the card of Libra, so you could be dealing with a Libra. Um, this uh, Six of Cups card, that is a water card, so that's um, Cancer, Scorpio, and um, Pisces. So, um, yeah, the Justice card only shows up when there's an injustice going on and when something needs to be brought back to balance. And if you are in balance because you're listening to your intuition, here comes your soulmate in February. Cool. And that is all I have for you. So prices have changed for my private readings going forward. Right now, I am booking for the 10th of January. And um, the um, readings for the one-hour readings are, have gone up to $80. And the 30-minute uh, readings have gone up to $50. Um, I have not yet decided to change the pricing on the um, readings that are you know, drop and go. Like I'll drop whatever I can to, to read for you right now. I haven't changed pricing on that yet. I just want to think that out a little more and uh, see if, if anyone's interested in that service. And if not, um, you know, maybe I'll come up with something different. Um, and I've actually decided to put in one more option for January. I'm going to see how it works out. I'm going to offer a one um, 15 minute reading, one question for $25. Um, so uh, you'll see all the information about that down below and I will uh, be putting together a video for That's the Fact Jacks and, and you will see uh, and hear more about that as well. All right, so I'm going to go. Happy 2020. Thank you very much for coming by and listening to and watching this video. I really appreciate you all, all the time. Please leave me a comment. Let me know if it resonated. You guys, you're awesome and you know it. I have to tell you, right? <laughs> okay, bye.